The details of a terrain are ultimately what gives it its character when altering the physical shape or topography of the model. Let's go through and see what biome details, filters, distribution rules, and effects are all about. The details you see on the terrain begin as a procedural fractal noise set of values. The first step is here within the main terrain layer where you can adjust the seed value that produces the basic shape of the terrain. If you are doing a fully custom terrain or having multiple biomes, then you may or may not need to adjust the seed value. Most of your detail adjustments will lie within each and every biome you create. So let's jump right into the default global biome. As mentioned before, each and every biome you create can have any number of different procedural details, of which starts right here in the main biome properties panel. We can change this biome's procedural generated seed, increase or decrease the general strength changes the intensity of the fractal noise, and the offset options will shift the fractal noise along any axis. The base noise section here is essentially the same type of noise adjustment that the general strength slider adjusts, but this graph breaks down the strengths to different resolutions, which lets you adjust the noise with greater fidelity. Each number represents a different level of detail you can adjust. The lower the number, the broader or larger details you can adjust, while the higher the number, the finer or smaller granular details you can adjust. If I were to alter some of the lower values, you can see the change affects a greater span of detail. Versus altering some of the higher values, you can see the change is more granular. The base shape setting is a preset style of landscape to begin with. This list gives you a variety of types of landscape features of which have their own procedural properties to adjust. For now, let's just stick with the default classic style. The base section is the additional properties for the base shape type as a whole. Aside from another seed adjustment, its strength slider and offset sliders, you can choose at which base noise level the shape type is to start procedurally generating at, as well as the noise height range lets you specify the range and altitude you want the fractal noise of this specific shape type to be generated within. This would be good to know in case you want a specific biome's details to essentially be clamped within a range along the vertical axis of the model. Expanding the global biome layer reveals the cream of the crop feature to adding detail to the landscape. Filters. Filters are terrain effects that reshape the terrain based on a variety of outcomes procedurally. Clicking the plus icon reveals the various categories of filters to choose from. Hovering your mouse over a filter will give you a preview of how that specific filter will transform your terrain before you click and add it to the outliner. Each filter has its own properties to adjust, and the best way to learn each filter is to really spend some time to adjust each filter settings to get a feel for its controls and what it can provide. However, each filter has the same generic controls such as operation mode, its strength value, and the various level of detail adjustments in the top graph. Just like biomes, filters can be rearranged to have a different hierarchy in how you want them to affect the terrain even the ability to group them together for more organization. By default, when you add a filter, it will populate the entire terrain, or really it will populate the entire bounds of the area of the specific biome it is being added to. But we can control how each filter is distributed on the terrain within the biome by using distribution rules. Expanding a filter further reveals the distribution category and clicking the plus icon here lets you choose from a variety of ways this filter will be procedurally masked within the biome. To see where a rule is being applied, it is easiest to view and edit with the show heat map option enabled. Now we can see the location on the terrain this filter is being masked based on the rules property settings, which will be different for each rule. If you add another distribution rule, you can not only adjust the hierarchy like any other layer in the outliner, but you can adjust their operations such as multiplying their effects together. In this case, we have a rule for the filter to be masked within this range of slope values, but also within this altitude range. We can do a different sequence of distribution rules such as rocks, roughness, and purlin noise set to subtract. Now we have a completely different result based on a few different arrangements and types. But we can take the distribution rules even further if we need to by adding effects layers to them. 
expanding a distribution rule such as this distribution height rule, we can click the plus icon on this category to choose from a variety of effects that will alter this rule's output on the terrain. Say we want to break up this harsh edge with some variety by choosing distortion, and maybe we add another one such as simple flow to soften and slightly stretch that distortion effect. Now we have a much desirable result. And to confirm our results, we can hide and unhide the distribution category to see the differences. Distribution rules and effects can be a great way to add customization to your filters and terrains beyond your normal terrain. When designing a terrain for detail, a good rule of thumb for understanding the workflow is always by starting off with creating the large details and from there progressively focusing on granular details, smaller and smaller. This will not only help you understand the creative process for your terrain, but will usually yield realistic results, unless you were going for a stylized terrain. More on that topic in a later video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.